There is a lot of NFT news today. Stick to the end to get all the juice. Headlining today's market update is none other than Spotify. That's right, the one you use every single day to listen to music. They have just launched a token gated access to special playlists from their artists. So far, this is just a beta test. One of the partners is Overlord. Overlord's a media company. They produce video and music. So for the token holders, they have curated an exclusive set list that only their holders can access on Spotify. Another partnership available for this beta testing was Kingship. Kingship, if you remember, is made up of four Board 8 Yacht Club members. They were signed by UMG but have not released their songs yet. Might we hear a peep of this in their exclusive song list here? Some might think this is boring and not much news, but guess what? The partners of this project has already seen members of their community sign up for Spotify for the first time. Users that would have never downloaded the app. Not only that, they upgraded to a premium subscription, something that I haven't even done. I rather listen to the commercials. This is very powerful to find a product that has actual product market fit. And the overall community member leader says the ability for them to change user behavior and drive KPIs that Spotify wants is something that's very, very powerful. It looks like Spotify has been testing these features since last year with a lot of solo artists. Potential benefits could be early access to album releases, maybe like a listening party, or behind the scene exclusive interviews. What if you were able to give the interview as a community? That'd be awesome. Music has been the forefront of what all Web3 enthusiasts is looking to disrupt and looks like it's gaining some headwind now. You know who else is climbing ahead and that is Blur. They accounted for a whopping 82% of trading volume last week. Although it does seem that over 53% of the volume is conducted by 500 wallets. I would not be surprised out of those 500 wallets if a lot of them were controlled by Blur to overtake OpenSea. Not to mention that watch trading is rampant. Let's wait for further analysis before we jump the gun that OpenSea is dead. You know who we thought was completely dead was the NFT marketplace for Coinbase. That may not be far from the truth. And out of nowhere, they launched an open mint edition for an NFT. You can still get this open edition mint up until this Sunday. So if you're watching this video today, you can still get it if you want to. It costs about $5 to $7 for gas fees. This open edition mint marks the launch of their layer two protocol called BASE. You can't buy BASE tokens on the secondary market, so no degening here. What BASE is for is for Coinbase own on-chain products and dApps. That doesn't stop speculators on degening on their open edition mint, which was free. So number 888 of the NFT was sold for 0.888 Ethereum, about $1,500 on the secondary market. Whoever sold that one really hit a home run from $7 to 1,455. What percent growth for that? That's amazing. Now we hear game publishers coming into the space has gotten a little bit boring, but let me show you some interesting statistics. Ubisoft is continuing to push in a Web3 with a launch of a Lunar New Year NFT called Rabbit. This is in collaboration with Sandbox and with over 2,000 NFTs, they sold out in a record time, 45 minutes. They raised over $175,000 to $200,000 within 45 minutes. That's amazing. And this comes on the heel of BlackRock this week, creating a new metaverse fund. Now, this metaphor ETF mainly tracks Meta, NVIDIA, Apple, and Microsoft, some hardware manufacturers here. But they did some key analysis that we should take note of. And that is that metaverse investing from companies has gone from $1.5 billion in 2020 to $57 billion in 2021. That's a 50x. And $120 billion in 2022, that's a 2x from 2021. According to Citigroup, at this pace, the addressable market for the metaverse is $13 trillion. $13 trillion is a lot of money, and that is why Ubisoft is coming in here and EA game developers like Ezra is coming in here to get a piece of this action. We all think terms like metaverse and NFT are a thing of the past. Let me tell you this, we're just getting started. In fact, there's a lot of bullish movement over in the Bitcoin NFT space. We're beginning to see the acquisitions of Bitcoin service providers and projects. You thought Ethereum NFTs were big. Just wait until the infrastructure of Bitcoin is developed. It's going to be massive. To wrap things up, there was a big splash in NFT news today, and that was the Dookie key. The key that was won by the pro gamer, one of one, has an offer for 690 Ethereum. The pro gamer wanted $3.5 million, 2,222 ETH, but cry him a river. He has a $1.1 million offer that he can accept right now from UpDAO. What I find fascinating about this is that this offer was made by a DAO controlled by its community. I bring this to our attention because I find it fascinating that in the land of NFTs, normal people like you and me can make a proposal to use millions of dollars. A $24 million treasury to be exact. So the question is, how did they get $24 million in this treasury in the first place? And it turns out that this treasury is controlled by the community from Pixel Vault. Pixel Vault is most known for the Punks comic book, a physical comic book derived from the original CryptoPunks and its latest release called The Inhabitants. I've never even heard of the inhabitants, but kudos to them for raising $24 million. 
With $24 million, they almost rivaled a noun's treasury, which holds close to $40 million at today's Ethereum price. What I'm trying to say is that DAOs are very, very powerful. We've seen one by a pro sports team in England that actually plays. Most recently, we saw MoonDAO collaborate with Dude Perfect to send someone into the moon. That ticket cost millions of dollars, from Super Bowl ads to real estate to maybe even in the future company acquisitions. Now, this is just a purchase of an NFT from Yuga Labs, but I would not be surprised to see DAOs really moving, shaping things in the future. I think I might just start a DAO, but before I do that, check out my link down below for my private community where we talk all NFTs on buying and selling and some exclusive alpha content. If not, I'm always giving you breaking news here three times weekly, so subscribe and follow along. See you guys next one. Peace.